This is an NVMe heat spreader, and what it's designed to do is reduce the operating temperature of an NVMe SSD. And the way it does that is it increases the air airflow over the top of the SSD and speeds up the dissipation process of heat so that it doesn't stop it from producing as much heat, it just makes it a lot more efficient at removing the heat from the SSD and sort of getting it out of the computer case. So essentially what it does is reduce the operating temperature of the SSD so that it can improve the lifespan so it will last longer and not only that but it could potentially sort of reduce thermal throttling so that you might be able to get faster read and write speeds out of your SSD. So that is what today's video is all about. Today we are going to be testing both of those things and having a look at the results in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So for the purposes of this test, I'll be using a WD Black NVMe SSD. It's sort of quite a budget option for an NVMe SSD, however it has incredibly good sort of read and write speeds. Now, first of all I'm going to be testing it without the heatsink, then I'm going to be testing it with the heatsink, and to add an extra layer I'm going to be testing it with the heatsink and a PCIe adapter, which sort of separates the SSD from the motherboard so that it has a lot more airflow running over it from the graphics card and the fans at the front of the case and sort of helps it sort of remove the heat a lot faster. So first of all we're going to be testing it with no heat sink attached straight to the motherboard and seeing what results we get. And we're going to be testing it using Crystal Disk Mark so that we can monitor the temperatures and make sure we are running with the SSD sort of maximum really giving it the strongest load that it's ever going to receive. So we're going to be taking a measurement just at idle speeds, so sort of once the computer boots up with no programs running after 20 minutes of it just idling. Then after that we are going to be taking a temperature in the middle of the test once it's done the fourth pass through. Then after that we're going to be taking a temperature five minutes after the test has finished so it had a little bit of time to cool down. Okay, so here on the screen we can see that I have Crystal Disk Mark open. And the way we're going to be running this test is, first of all, obviously, selecting the correct drive here. So here we're going to be selecting our uh, WD Black NVMe SSD. Then we're going to select the number of passes it will be going through, so that will be eight passes. And then here we'll be selecting the size of the test file. And we are selecting 32 gigabytes just to make sure that it will be running at full speed for a very sus sustained amount of time, making sure it's running for a, sort of quite a while, it's not going to be done and sort of finish instantly. So, all we have to do is, well, I have to turn around and press to start. And away it goes, and that will run for the next sort of 10 minutes or so whilst it goes through all of that, because as I said, we're doing eight passes rather than sort of the typical much lower number of that. So we're going to be taking a reading at four passes and then again five minutes after it's finished so it's had a little bit of time to cool down. So to make the most of your heatsink you are going to have to remove the sticker which is on top of your SSD. Now you will want to be careful doing this because it, the PCB is very sensitive so there's a chance you may damage it so be as careful as you possibly can when removing the sticker. Not to mention that removing the sticker may vo void your warranty depending on the manufacture of your product, so if you do not want to void your warranty I would not recommend going through this process. Now moving on, once you have the sticker removed you have to make sure you put, remove the sticker from the back of the heat spreader and then gently and delicately place it on top of the SSD modules. Once it is firmly secured, you should be able to sort of see an uh, instant reduction in operating temperatures. Now, do be careful to make sure that there is still enough clearance, as in a laptop, for instance, this method will not work, as you will likely not have enough space for the heat spreader. So, do not attempt this unless you are running in a desktop PC setup. Installing the PCIe Writer card is also probably quite an easy process. In fact, it's definitely safer than installing the heatsink and it's definitely a lot easier to do. So all you really have to do is take your NVMe SSD and rather than installing it into your motherboard as you usually would, you install it into the card and just tighten down the screw as you usually would in the motherboard. Then you would install the 
PCIe riser as you would with any other PCIe adding card such as a graphics card and there is no, there's no external power required and off you go to the races, it is good to go from there. So that is the card installed, ready to sort of take advantage of the heat and dissipation benefits. Now, moving on, let's have a look at some of our test results. Our results at idle alone were fairly interesting. Now, with no heat sink whatsoever, our idle temperatures were measured at 54 degrees Celsius. Then, once we added the heat sink, we, we saw an immediate reduction down to 50 degrees Celsius. That there alone is quite impressive. However, what really was impressive was when we added the sort of PCIe adapter, because then we saw an immediate reduction down to 41 degrees Celsius. That is fantastic because it means that we are getting much lower sort of operating temperatures and the lifespan of this SSD is likely to increase by a lot. This same trend continued during our after-test benchmark as well as our during test benchmark. Here we saw about 4 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius reduction when we added the heat spreader and then a further 10 degrees reduction, roughly give or take a couple of degrees, when we added the adapter card. Now this was really interesting because it does mean that not only are we going to be sort of improving our lifespan, of our SSD, but as you can see from the graph on the screen at the moment, we might actually sort of be able to benefit from an increase in operating speeds as well, because sort of as it's running at a lower temperature, it suffers less from thermal throttling, so you're able to get closer to the manufacturer rated maximum operating speeds. Here you can see I got an increase of about 300 megabits per second when I was in my sequential read tests. Um, so that's an, an amazing improvement going from 15, 000, sorry, 1500 to 1800 and I think that's definitely something worth, worth investing in. So the summary is fairly self-explanatory, I'll let the numbers do the majority of the talking for me. You just saw in those graphs there that there's definitely a significant reduction in temperatures when adding the heat spreader and an even more significant reduction in temperatures when we use the PCIe riser card. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be for everyone. For example, if you're using a laptop, this probably isn't going to be for you because 95% of the time you're not going to have space. In fact, no, I'm going to even say 99.9% .9 of the time you're not even going to have space for the heat spreader and you're definitely 100% of the time not going to have space for the PCIe riser card. Now, that being said, if you are on a desktop, it might not also be for you. For example, if you don't even have space for an NVMe SSD on your motherboard, if it doesn't support it, then this isn't even bother. I wouldn't even bother thinking about this because well, it's, it's literally useless. And then if you, for example, don't have any spare PCIe slots, then it's not worth getting the riser card. And if you don't have space sort of vertically, if it's a very small form factor case or your graphics card or any other expansion card is getting in the way of adding a heat spreader, then this also wouldn't work for you. So this is something you might want to check out. Make sure you've got all the right clearances before you go ahead and make these purchases. However, they are very low cost. It's definitely worth it, especially these products I purchased from Acasa. So it's definitely worthwhile with the investment if you've got the money and you've got the space. Would I recommend it? Yes. Is it a good idea? Yes. Did we see an improvement in both temperature and speeds? Yes, we did. So I think that's a fairly self-explanatory video. There's really not much else to say. So if you did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and hit subscribe. If you've got some friends who might be interested in this, if they've recently purchased an NVMe SSD, make sure you hit share or send this video on to them in the whatever format you please. But Overall, I've been RMD Tech and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've clicked on this video to find out how to add RGB lighting to your system, it's probably for one of two reasons. Number one, you've built a budget system and the components you've used don't actually have any RGB baked into them. Or number two, you built your system a few years ago back when RGB lighting wasn't really a craze and so you might have top-end components but none of them have RGB lighting baked in. And now you're looking to upgrade sort of to get RGB but you don't want to have to replace all of your components because they're still working fine for you and that's fine. So what I'm going to do today in this video is explain to you what I consider to be a fantastically 
cost-effective way of upgrading your systems from non-RGB to RGB with the best possible bang for your buck. So the first thing you're going to want to do is check if your motherboard has a 4p 